Okay. Chicago, Chicago, that darling, down that darling, down Chicago, Chicago. Hey guys, what you're listening to? That was David Greenberger at the beginning, and now it is Jack Madurian. Um, the CD is called Downloading the Repertoire. Um, uh, I'm not sure what year it was, but um, uh, <laughs> while David was working at the Duplex Planet, Jack, who was a resident there and loved to sing and would sing at the drop of a hat. All you had to do was ask him and he would sing, uh, claiming that he had a repertoire of almost as many songs as Sinatra. David said, I challenged him to sing for 45 minutes continuously, armed with a handheld cassette recorder loaded with a 90-minute tape. We stepped onto the back porch of the duplex nursing home in Boston, where, which was where he lived. It was a clear June afternoon. The weather was perfect. Birds can be heard singing in the trees, and another resident, Francis McElroy, can also be heard singing in the distance from time to time. This is the unedited recording of Jack's 129-song medley. And it's a delight to listen to. And I thought it would be the perfect introduction. I'm going to turn the volume down a bit, though. Um, to what is really, I think, in almost every way, Ground Zero uh, with David Greenberger. Um, David had studied art, had a degree in art, had lived in Atlanta, moved back from Atlanta to Boston. And um, two things happened that really changed his life. One, after seeing the um, <clears throat> swimming pool cues perform in Atlanta, he got the urge to play in a band, and when he got back to Boston, he found the advertisement that was uh, uh, in, in, in one of the local uh, scene rags um, placed by Phil Kaplan uh, looking for a bass player. Um, that led ultimately to um, <clears throat> the uh, forming of the band Men in Volts, which David was involved with throughout their entire career. The other thing, and perhaps even more importantly, because it actually shows up in Men in Volts, although and Men in Volts actually kind of show up every now and then in, uh, in, in uh, the Duplex Planet, was that he got a job working as activities uh, director for the Duplex Nursing Home in Jamaica Plain. And um, uh, it, it was an all-men's nursing home, at least originally, and I think always, perhaps, um, as, or at least as long as David worked there. Um, David found himself very uh, intrigued by the characters that he uh, was meeting uh, in his work, and he began to interview them. Uh, not, not interested, although in, interested in their past, in their life, in their history, and all of that too, but recognizing them as even though they're living in a nursing home uh, with diminished capacity, uh, oftentimes uh, dementia and, and various other uh, you know, limitations, um, that they were still people uh, and, and still alive and living in the present. And he became very interested in them as they are. Uh, and that, that's the kind of person David is. He's, he's a, a people person. Um, and uh, that, I think that's the reason why he has attracted so many people um, as friends. Um, and his, uh, his circle of friends is very large and very varied. Um, and uh, uh, he has met so many people uh, and he's such an interesting person. Um, I've never met him personally. We were just talking two days ago. Um, <coughs> on instant messaging and, and uh, he had shown me uh, what he calls them his Hollywood squares they're the uh, on your Facebook page it'll show like nine people in your friend list um, and different photographs and it just sort of changes and, and rotates and he's periodically 
uh, you know, showed me them before, and he and he showed me that one, and I was on it, and he said, um, it's kind of funny, you're the only of of these people that I haven't actually met in person, and yet I feel like I know you so well, and that's the way I feel about him too. Uh, uh, we have corresponded so much over the past several years now um, that I really feel like I know him very well uh, and, I, and I feel very much and, and do consider him a real friend. Um, I guess um, we're the um, internet ages uh, version of pen pals or something, but it's, it's quite common that we communicate. Anyway, back to the story. In interviews, David has stated that it was at that time that he put down his brushes and canvases and um, really came to realize that um, what he, he wanted to do with his life was to document these people and explore them and their, their, um, their stories and, and what they were and what they, you know, how they are. So he started doing a little thing where he would interview people and, uh, and then he would made these little circulars. And initially, um, he, he found no shortage of people interested in being interviewed and in talking with him, um, which is certainly not uncommon. Um, my ex-wife is in a nursing home, and I know when I visit her, it's, I'm amazed at how many people just want to talk, you know. So when they find someone who wants to listen and who acknowledges that, um, you know, without condescension and without, um, you know, uh, uh, treating them as though they're not, they're less than real people, uh, these uh, people will really open up and they love to do that. So he typed them up and he started having a thing, hey folks, uh, you know, the new, the new duplex planet, which is what he decided to call it. Um, is available in the uh, dining hall, uh, come and get it. Well, found out very quickly, <laughs> this is funny, and this is so true. I used to work in a, uh, in a, a drop-in center for people with long-term mental illness, um, and uh, <laughs> there are certain things you gotta provide. Sugar, <laughs> in the form of cookies or cake or something, Coffee, um, it's it, the, the, the big three, calories, caffeine, and nicotine. <laughs> if, if, if they had those three, by God, you, they would come. Um, <laughs> well, none of that was available. They weren't really, they didn't really care about reading the things. They just enjoyed the interaction of doing them. However, he would take them home to his apartment, uh, you know, a few copies, and, and they'd be sitting around, and friends would come over, and they'd be hanging out, and they'd pick it up, and they would just get fascinated, uh, you know, with these characters and with these people. And that is how the Duplex Planet was born. I call it Ground Zero because this is the thing that opened so many doors for him. Um, uh, and and uh, maybe you'll kind of see that a little bit. Um, I do not have the first issue, but I do have the second issue right here. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can see, they were eight and a half by 11 copy sheets stapled in the corner. Issue number three was still in that kind of a, a format. And um, then by issue number four, he had changed it. He had found uh, apparently uh, access to a um, folding stapler and stapling machine and, and started printing them up this way. And I know that David worked for some time in, in some kind of a printing um, business. So uh, there's an issue number five. And they, they began to increasingly become more elaborate and more involved. Number eight, which then has this and as you can see, I'm missing numbers six and seven, and I am missing several. The Duplex Planet um, totaled an, uh, 187 issues for over 25 years, uh, beginning in 1979, and um, the last 
issue, which is this one right here, this is issue 187, uh, was in 2000 and something. Um, let me let me find it here. Uh, what does it say? It should say somewhere on here. Um, 2010, actually. So this was pretty new um, when he sent these to me. I have duplicates of some some issues, but not all of them. Um, he, after, of course, he, he didn't work there all that time. He, he um, left working at the Duplex Planet at, at some point. I'm not really sure how, how many years he worked there. Two or three at least. But, um, like I said, he had found his, his um, he had found his calling, or, or uh, I guess you might say, here's, this is issue uh, number 10, which is really wonderful, uh, does, and this issue is devoted to, it's March 1980, number 10, many pages, <laughs> and says, does upside down reading matter? That's the that was the question, and uh, reading matter once again. And uh, interviews conducted at the Duplex Planning Nurse Plant at the Duplex Nursing Home in Jamaica Plains, Massachusetts. And then simply he asked this question of of all these different people in here, uh, and uh, they would talk. It would just spark them to talk about things and that's that's how he worked he would ask people questions sometimes uh very odd questions um and uh i'm going to show you a few more as i flip through these um i i know one time he asked he asked people if they would um i think it was uh, would you would you swim in coffee <laughs> And, and he got some very interesting... This is one of my favorite uh, issues. This is number 20, January 1981. And, of course, how many of you recognize what this is recreating? Anybody? Well, he fortunately showed us on the inside what it was. Absolutely wonderful, wry sense of humor. I have two two copies of that one, actually. Um, no, I don't. This is number 20, and then this is the newly revised and expanded edition of the 1981 classic, which he did in... Um, uh, let's see here. Um, 1986. So, um, some years later, um, here's a, here's one that's great. Just an example of his humor. And, uh, this is the red, this is the issue with the red cover and nothing on the back. <laughs> Other than of course that, um, and there are some that, uh, with hand applied things, various people, uh, contributed artwork. This artwork uh, was contributed by Anne. I, I always forget her name. It's a long. It's one of those long hyphenated type names. Uh, Anne Richmond Boston. She was the singer in the band The Swimming Pool Cues, um, who, by the way, recently reissued their A and M albums. They they put out two albums on A and M, and they were recently reissued uh, on on uh, on CD. If, uh, and a really good band too, by the way. Um, just a little bit of the heart. Uh, this is an issue, um, uh, issue number, let me see here, uh, number 26 of July, 1981. And it's, it's a memorial to Herbie Caldwell, who uh, from September 9th, 1894, uh, his birth date, uh, and he passed away on July 1st, 1981. Um, couple of quotes from Herbie on the back here. You got me like a pair of pants. I'll smoke another cigar by and by, you know? And, and, and that's, that's one of the things that makes David such a special individual to me. Um, he, his, uh, his acceptance and love of these people 
a lot of people. The snakes issue. Uh, there's a, a great song called Snakes by um, uh, I forget who who did the song, but it's on the uh, it's in one of the Ernest Noise Brookings um, lyrics by Ernest Noise Brookings, and the and that poem is here. Uh, and and then you know there are just some things with people talking about snakes. There's also uh, a, a, some great. Uh, 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 monologue that David does uh, that came from that issue. Um, be, these um, these these went on to to really have a lot of effect on on, on a lot of his subsequent uh, work, and and I'll, I'll get more into that later. I'm I'm just kind of flipping through and looking for a couple of things. Um, <laughs> the mo monumental dense pack straight through numbers. And here's the monument to B. Arnold's left leg. I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't know. One of the cool things in here uh, is this issue has Ken's Corner. And this is uh, March. It's issue number uh, 1983. I know that Ken, Ken Eglin, who wrote uh, the liner notes on the uh, second Men and Volts album, and uh, Ken Eglin's review of records, etc. Uh, here we go. Here, here. I'll just give you an example of one. The Shags, My Cutie, lovely, nice song. There was guitars in there. That was beautiful. Everything in there was nice. I loved it. Lovely singing. Who's singing it? The Shags. That record's gonna go. They shouldn't make a lot of copies of that. If people don't buy that song, man, they're fools. They should make a lot of copies of that, excuse me. She sings it with her heart. It's a nice song to sit in the front room and listen to with a girl, especially with a girl. You put your arm around her neck and you concentrate on the music, but you've got to really try to concentrate because you're really thinking of that girl. She's got to be a poor, who's got to be a gorgeous piece of humanity. With that voice, she's got to be. That song is enough to make you think. Think about the girl you're sitting with or how you want to think about her. <laughs> uh, uh, Brave Combo, My Girl Lollipop. That's the way they're playing music today. You can't hear one word he's saying. Just giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Pretty good song. It might go somewhere. I like it. The beat was all right. I, like I say, you can't lose that first beat. You lose that first beat and you're finished. And that Ken um, later uh, also was published in, in uh, a music magazine. I'm trying to remember. I think it was Trouser Press, but it might have been something else. I, I don't remember. Um, but Ken, uh, uh, you know, actually became uh, kind of well known. He he also went with David to uh, uh, um, there was a uh, a YouTube or not a YouTube a, a, a public access program. I'm going to try and find the link for that, and I will put it down below on this, where David and and Ken uh, appeared. Um, as guests, it was kind of a talk show format. I can't remember the name. It's something genius. Um, and uh, the Incredible Casuals were on and, and played. Um, and then they talked with Ken. I would love for you to watch that because Ken is a wonderful character. I, I've got a couple other things by him, but I'm just trying to. I, I really like this artwork. I think it's great. Um, this is issue 51. And um, uh, the, uh, the artist uh, was by Gary Lieb. Um, and Kent's Corner, they specifically announced that it will not is not in this issue because of space issues, but that it will reappear in issue number 52. And let's see if it did. Because I think I have issue number 52 right here. I do. Uh, the, the poem Cadillac by Ernest Noyes Brookings. Uh, and a little talk, and then here we go, Ken's Corner. And in this one, he reviewed uh, the kinks when I turn off the living room light, uh, the Collins kids, hoy hoy, Eugene Chadbourne, <laughs> the Shreve. Uh, David would take just these things and he would play them for Ken and, and then record or write down Ken's response. Uh, Jeff Muldar and the Nightlights. Jeff Muldar is, of course, Maria Muldar's husband was uh, their ex now, and and is a, is a, a good friend of David's. Uh, just last fall, I think it was, he spent a week staying 
with the Greenbergers. Love Tractor, uh, cool, cool. Uh, I have their first two. Um, I maybe I, I bet I've got this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's all instruments. Love Tractor was a band out of Athens. Um, very highly regarded critically, not too uh, much heard of. Who uh, their first album, um, they uh, had no vocals whatsoever, uh, and then later they um, they did uh, have a vocalist. Uh, here, here, the Duplex Planet Number Sixty of Hamlet had a great sense of humor, and then there's the poem. Uh, Romeo and Juliet by Ernest Noyes Brookings on the back. A lot of poetry by Ernest Noyes Brookings. Uh, issue dedicated to eyes. Here we go. Here's one that's kind of interesting. Uh, Will William Fergie Ferguson. His name was William Ferguson. Everybody called him Fergie. And on this one, every issue, um, issue and this is issue number 62, has a stamp, a postage stamp, a one cent postage stamp on it says, consider the postage stamp, my son. Its existence consists of its ability to stick to one thing until it gets there. William Fergie Ferguson. Um, a couple of poems and so on. And there's another one in here. Um, uh, 88 popular quotations. Uh, you know, These are all wonderful. Most of these are available. Uh, here's... Ernest Noyes Brookings, who, and one of the publications that I do not have and I really want, uh, is this book, which was titled We Did Not Plummet Into Space by Ernest Noyes Brookings. Problem with this stuff is it's so specialized uh, as to the kind of people that it's likely to appeal to, to that it's very, very, you just don't find um, that stuff, uh, you know being sold, resold very often. People don't don't buy it and, and sell it or, or get rid of it. Um, chances are, if you liked it, you're still going to like it. Um, who did the artwork on this one? Um, he had a lot of people um, who contributed artwork, as I, I pointed out. The uh, one, here's a... <laughs> I love that dog. Uh, yeah, that's very closely related to the dog on my uh, good food, good friends, uh, good friends, good music, good food, funny jokes, good luck. Um, poem, The Wizard of Oz. Uh, you could just go through this and, and um, come up with an amazing number of uh, uh, things here. Uh, Clo here, sandwich making, closed sandwiches and open sandwiches. It's the sandwich issue, of course. Um, I'm, I'm going way too slow through these. Uh, I need to, to flip a little faster. This is one where the artwork was contributed by his ex-wife, Eva, who I played that little uh, test pressing uh, when I was talking about Chuck Bell. Um, that isn't available, by the way, anywhere. Um, that was a, a very limited little thing that they pressed um, to give to friends. And... Um, I, I feel incredibly fortunate to have that. I, I believe I've shown the uh, my large uh, archival quality uh, print uh, based on these linoleum uh, blocks that uh, he had designed by the residents. And I, I have thought in the past how cool it would be the thing is, is I only have one copy of this. If I had another copy, I would take, uh, or two uh, uh, more copies, I would take them apart and, in, and include them too. Because, But this was the money book, um, the money issue. Um, uh, Jad Fair contributed artwork um, from time to time. His brother David contributed artwork. Interesting, uh, another... Walter Carrion passed away, memorial issue, and and David always seemed to to uh, make uh, memorial issues for those. There are four issues devoted exclusively to Ernest Noyes Brickings, who was probably the the real the the greatest gem. Ernie, Ernie and and um, and and uh, Ken were probably the two 
the two people who were were maybe the most um, really electrifying artwork there. Huh? Um, I need to hurry, so I'm I'm just gonna kind of I'm I was looking for a couple others that were uh, just kind of funny. I thought here we go. Here's a Jad Fair cover right here. See that? Uh, I love this one too. I'm not, I, I'm not going to read it to you. I'll just let you read it. But I think this one is just just wonderful. <laughs> Advice for children. <laughs> uh, use a bookmark. Use good penmanship. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Wonderful stuff. Um, I'm not seeing the one I wanted. Um, I'm just not finding it. So... Uh, yeah, and, and uh, oh golly, uh, you know this is a bit. Uh, uh, it's in here somewhere. Here, here's a here's a uh, David Fair cover. You can see some similarity in their in their art styles here. Um, and uh, I, I've I've talked in the past about uh, David and Jad um, performing there, and 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 David Jad and. Uh, Here's, here's a photo of Ken L. Eglin. Uh, and uh, I, I, I wonder, is, is this the one where he had passed away? Yes, Ken Eglin, 1915 to 1984. Uh, wonderful, wonderful character, and what a character he was. Uh, absolutely a delightful fellow. Um, I, I can't go and grab it right now. I do have, uh, but... This is one of my favorite uh, bits of cover art uh, there. Glad I saw that real quickly. And th there are some others that are just... Uh, here, I, if you'll recall from the Men in Volts, I mentioned that this, uh, that the, the cover of Tramps in Bloom, uh, that the, the photograph had been used as a duplex planet issue cover. And there it is. Um, it's such a strange photograph, and, and, and one of the odd things about it, of course, is that it doesn't really, um, uh, the second issue devoted exclusively to stories and observations of Ken Eglin, um, who is remembered uh, for his music review column, Ken's Cor uh, cover, Ken's Corner. A book of these reviews, which appeared in these pages as well as several music magazines, is in the works. I've never seen that book. Um, I, I want that book too. Uh, I, I just want that book. Uh, Ernie, um, just you know, just such a, a wonderful thing, and 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 very clearly, um, a, a situation in which David. Uh, and his his uh, caring for people. I can't find the one that I was. Uh, well, here's another one though that I absolutely loved. Uh, look at this dude. Look at this dude. What's amazing? This is a, a photograph of Irving Snell as a young man. And uh, the reason it is on the cover, Irving Snell had passed away, I believe. And uh, yes, uh, but here's, so he was featured in it. Uh, the entire, um, the, enti the entire uh, issue is not uh, devoted to Irving Snell, but, but um, just, some parts of it, but I, I believe he may have passed away. Um, at any rate, I, I found that a very moving cover, uh, and then and then to to see and to, and to read the uh, the interview with him in there. Uh, I was looking for one. Uh, it's got a piece of Scott of, of masking tape on the, on the cover, and then it talks about crappy as John, and it's it, the the whole. Uh, issue is devoted to crappy jobs or horrible jobs and the crappiest job I ever had was having to uh, stick these pieces of tape on here 
Well, I can't find it. It's in here. Um, so, uh, and that, that's pretty cool stuff. And uh, I have a few little special things that I'll, I'll show you, that I would like to find more. Here's uh, uh, Ken Ken's Corner Christmas supplement, but I do not believe this is the book he's talking about. This is just a very small little chat book. Um, and, and I have some others. Here's drawings of John Colton, who was a resident. Uh, volume 2. I don't have Volume 1. I would love to have Volume 1. The drawings themselves are very spontaneous and childlike, utterly without um, that, you know, self-consciousness and, and that uh, whole, you know, art school education thing. This is a little photograph booklet that he, uh, David made called The, the Trouble with Christmas. Uh, in 1980, and uh, photos of David, you know, doing Santa Claus things and stuff. Um, here's a here's a thing from 1981, December 31st, uh, called Pals and Jop. I'm I'm not really sure what that Jop means, but uh, what it is is it's just a booklet of all these different friends and people, uh, everybody from uh, Penn Jillette, um uh, uh, Jad Fair, uh, all kinds of people, uh, with their lists of Phil Milstein, uh, Philippe Milstein, <laughs> that's Phil Milstein, I'm sure, uh, you know, and, and very, I, actually, I shouldn't say that, God knows, uh, and just a lot of people, but it's just lists of their favorite books, from the year, uh, movies, books, albums, all kinds of stuff. Uh, one other, a couple other things. This is Ben and Edwina. Um, this is a, called this from the Small Batch series of top shelf productions. Um, a comic thing. This was uh, done in 2001. Patrick Moriarty. Uh, uh, and uh, let's see here. Artwork is by Patrick Moriarty and a few other people. Uh, and these are based on Duplex Planet things, and they're they're just really a delight. Now I'm not really sure who Byrne and Edwina were, I, I I can't say, but I'm I feel quite comfortable that they are related in some way to um, the Duplex Nursing Home or um, you know something like that, uh, uh, you know. Well, was John Wayne really brave? Um, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, in, uh, at one point, uh, somebody got interested enough in the duplex planet. I'm not really sure how this came about, but um, there were, uh, I'm not sure how many issues were, were published. I have three, four, 14, 13, let's see, I have issues one. I'm missing issues two, three, and four of 14 issues, and I don't know if there were more done or not. These are from Fantagraphic Books, um, and they this is the Duplex Planet Illustrated, and uh, it has just some really cool things on it. They're all based on things that have, were were published in the Duplex Planet Nursing Home, and multiple uh, artists did the artwork. I'm just I'm holding this up so that you can see and read this thing. Um, this is the first issue, uh, right here. Francis McElroy, who uh, I just mentioned a minute ago, you can hear him singing in the background. I keep smoking, but what I really want to do is drive around a stick shift car. <laughs> Wonderful. And, and, and I, by the way, um, although, although David um, does, is not condescending towards these people, it's not that you're not allowed to laugh. Uh, there are many things that are absolutely hilarious that you've just got to laugh. If you can't laugh at that, you know. I mean, look at that. Of course it's funny. Um, 
whether I, I don't know I don't know if David has any more of these or not I do know that a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the um, issues of the magazine are available you can order them um, and, and it gives you a bulk deal uh, you know um, would Sally be nature's soul uh, on the back of this I love the, here's, here we go here's here's one of the kinds of questions that he would ask people. Who is Toto? And then various responses that he would get from different residents. You know. And that's kind of how I work. And I'm particularly showing you guys these because I don't brag and I don't express my education. Uh, you know. Ah, I love this one. This is great. Wonderful artwork. And the artwork inside, although they're black and white, uh, is, is quite varied. You can see the final page of one thing and another on the other. Uh, and really, really nice. I'm not a big comic book fan, but I think some of you guys might be. And, oh, here's, here's a... Uh, um, Oh yeah, this is this is also in the book uh, that I showed you with um, what's her names, um, you know, uh, flowers. Um, you know, what do you have to do to get a, a cloud named after you? That's a question that David asked people. <laughs> what do you have to do to get a cloud named after you? And he would just simply, you know, he, he asked questions that would uh, sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, spark uh, these people in their minds. And some, some of the responses that he got were, of course, just... Uh, I love that. I catch anyone. I mean, wheeze, puff, puff. You know, just wonderful. Um, you know. <laughs> you know. Um, I, I just, I, I just totally enjoy this stuff. I totally enjoy this stuff. Absolutely. Um, what you shave off goes down the drain, out to the ocean, and fish eat it. That's uh, eat it. Sure, they ain't particular. That's where we all come from, isn't it? Slept pretty well last night, but I'm not ready to drive a car. You know, just capturing these characters, and these are really, really uh, such a such a fun thing to to read and go through. A uh, couple other things I could show you, and uh, maybe I'll, well, I will show you this. Uh, on David's 50th birthday, this was published. His 60th birthday is coming up this year, here in a few months, and uh, um, I really hope something special. And in this, it's just people writing and talking about uh, David and the kind of guy he is, and uh, just what a what a wonderful character and what a what a what a fine human being he is, uh, and some of them are just really interesting. There's one in here written by um, uh, uh, Robin Hitchcock, um, who is a good friend of David's. Uh, there's one. There's a little thing in here I think from. Um, uh, in fact, they're both. Uh, where is it? Uh, you know, uh, Sean Slade uh, wrote something in here. Chuck Levin, uh, Don Rose. Where is it? It's in here somewhere. Um, and and people from all parts and times in his life. Uh, John Proudman, the drummer from uh, uh, Men and Volts. Excellent drummer, too, by the way. Uh, Dave Alvin. You may recognize that name. Um, and, and these are just uh, very uh, a cousin. Uh, you know, just a lot of people. I know it's in here somewhere. I can't find it there. But, well, 
Uh, <laughs> I'll bet you that's the actual copy of the original thing. Never give a robot gum is what it says. Well, uh, at some point when David was in high school, he stuck that on somebody's refrigerator door and it stayed there. Um, uh, uh, you know, um, and, and you know, just other Jeff Muldar, um, a lot of people, a lot of people, and you know, so I, I'm really, really happy to have that too. Um, that's really all I want to talk about right now. This is uh, the published stuff. I wish I could have found the one with the tape on it. Um, <laughs> worst job I ever had is sticking these crummy pieces of tape on this magazine cover. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I have not read every one of these yet, even now. I, I have probably uh, 170 or so of them, uh, some of them in duplicates. Um, I'd love to find the others, but I, whether I ever will be able to or not, I don't know. And uh, and then I have these, uh, and, and you know, uh, and a few other things that I, I'm not showing you for uh, various odd reasons. But uh, that's kind of really, um, I think, where things really, really happened for David. Um, uh, and and a unique individual who happened to be at the right place at the right time, so to speak. Um, and uh, I think I think the whole world is a better place for it. Uh, uh, he saw something in there that most of us would not have seen. I know I wouldn't have. And I, I've worked in nursing homes and I've worked with mentally ill people and all kinds of different people over my life. And But I've never, never come to the point where I, I saw the kind of, of uh, potential and the calling uh, that, that David saw when he started to work at the duplex nursing home in Jamaica Plain in 1979.